Hi, this is Bob Rubart with the Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here at the Great Lakes Oracle Conference in a lecture hall that could double as a beer cooler, and I'm talking with Tom Kite. How are you doing, Tom? Uh, good, thanks. You just finished your keynote speech, which was on Oracle in-memory database. For the benefit of those who weren't able to see your keynote, what's the most important thing to remember about the in-memory database? Well, there's actually a couple of things, not just one thing. One, it should make your business intelligence analytic type queries go orders of magnitude faster in many cases. Uh, it's, it's a low impact to the DBA as far as setting up and configuring, so it's, it's not something that's hard to turn on. Uh, the third thing is it doesn't impact any existing features. So if you're using replication or data guard or rack or anything else like that, the addition of these new data structures don't impact the ability to use any of those capabilities. And maybe one of the most important things is uh, as long as you have a, a well-written application, you need to make no application level changes to do this. The optimizer will figure out whether it should use an index to get a row or a full scan uh, and a cell offload and exadata to get all the rows or to use the in-memory structure that's up in the SGA area to, to answer the question. So it's a decision made by the optimizer. Now, all these folks you see behind us are, are getting ready for your session. Uh, I believe the title is Five Things You Need to Know. Performance. Okay, okay. Give me one thing I need to know about performance. Well, one of the major topics we're going to talk about is connection management because uh, I see far too many systems where there's hundreds, if not thousands, of connections to a database. And many DBAs are actually proud that I got 10,000 people connected to my database. Those people scare me because they'll have 10,000 people connected to a machine with 16 or 32 or 64 cores. How many things can a 64-core machine do simultaneously? Approximately, I don't know, 64, okay? Which is far less than hundreds or thousands. And what they've done is set up a great potential for that system to every now and then go haywire. And so these people with thousands of connections, they usually have a conversation with me that goes along the lines of, everything runs good until it doesn't. And then something happens, we reboot, and everything's good again until it isn't. And I know exactly what's happening, is that most of the times, they're having 10 to 20 connections active and everything's okay. But every now and then, something happens. A query takes a little bit longer than it used to, IOs take a little longer than they used to, or twice as many people hit the enter button simultaneously, and the load goes up just a little bit. But because the load went up just a little bit, we need more connections to become active, which increases load, which makes us need more connections, and you get into what I call a death spiral, where dozens and then hundreds of connections try to become simultaneously active, and it's all over at that point. Well, I know all these people behind us are waiting to hear you talk, so I'm going to let you get to it. Thanks, Tom. Okay, thanks.